Hey everyone, uh, Detlef here again, and welcome back to another segment in the LCC channel. You know, in the previous segments, we've been focusing mostly on the theory, if you will, behind uh, the LCC nodes, as well as the wiring. So this time, we're actually going to get into one of the nodes and uh, configure it, configure the firmware. So here we go. Okay, so here we are at the computer. I assume that uh, you've got the LCC bus tied over to your PC somehow. Um, before we actually start configuring, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have all your I.O. listed. Um, Documentation is a big thing. LCC is not necessarily difficult. It's really pretty easy to understand the concepts. But there's so many different settings and so many little blocks that it's easy to get kind of confused. I mean, even in this little, in this little demo layout, you can see that we've got a lot of points that we need to track here. And as you build out your layout, you're going to find that it gets more confusing. Initially, I just went ahead and just winged a lot of this stuff. Um, but it just ended up showing it's worthwhile to write everything down. Anyway, so I've got here a little description, the I.O. type, I.O. function, what kind of node it is. Node address is very helpful, what point it is. And that way you have that documented. All right, with that, you go ahead and open up your Panel Pro, just like you would normally. Um, it should come up with your Railroad. Let me say OK on that. And when it opens up, you'll have the option of opening up your LCC bus. Now, when you get into here, you say Configure Nodes. And it'll show you where you are in your network. So this network here shows that we've got only two nodes on our LCC network. Um, one is, the first one is always the USB interface. So you have that there. Nothing to configure on it. It just exists. And on this demo layout, we have a grand total of one node. So it's, uh, you know, this is the address 1001.09. Anyway, so there you go. And you click on Open Configuration Dialog. It'll open. Now what's interesting to note is that right now what it's doing is it's actually reading from the node. You're not working off of the computer. You're actually going to be working on the node itself. And as we work through this, we'll see how it uh, progresses. So Okay, so after you um, open up the configuration dialog here, you know the first thing you want to do before you start configuring anything is back it up. Because if that way, if there's anything that's really not working right or whatever, um, you can always go and, and restore it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down here as this and um, blank. I'm going to give it that number so we have reference. Okay. Blank unconfigured. There you go. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, that's all there is to it. And that way, if I mess up here, I can always pull it back up. All right, now we're going to go on to the next thing. Let's just go through the different parts of this particular node. First uh, section here is just identification. Shows you a little bit about the make and model of the particular node. Also shows you the hardware version and software version. These can be upgraded, up, uh, updated, and I believe we did a video on that before. Segment node ID. Um, this is where you go ahead and put in your name. So what do you want to put in here? Anything you want. So I'm going to say call in node name LCC demo layout. And this is where you can be a little bit creative with your name so that you can identify it easily within your system. Um, notice that it turned uh, kind of a light orange there. That means it's still local and it hasn't been written out to the actual node. When I hit right, see it goes back to black and white. Now that is actually uploaded onto the unit. In fact, if I hit refresh here, look at that LCC demo layout. It already came up and it shows that it was there. So no description. Uh, testing things okay. out. Of course, this is sort of a silly way to describe it, but it sort of shows what's going on here. Segment node power monitor. We don't really use that a whole lot. I don't anyway. Um, theoretically, if you have some issue with power on your uh, LCC bus, it'll actually send an event ID that everything's okay or not okay, and you can track that. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Where it really gets interesting, by the way, as we're going through this, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this. Keep in mind, the best way to do this is start from top to bottom, one at a time. Top to bottom, one at a time. If you start, you know, oh, I want to go ahead and set up by segment rules. Well, that's great, but you don't really want to do that until you've really set up the node up front. So go ahead and work from the top down, and that's probably the most productive. Anyway, so here we are, segment port IO uh, number one. 
And just like we saw on our little I.O. list here in previous videos, you saw that it had eight I.O. points. Here we go. Line one, line two, line three, line four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. And they will match to how I've wired it out. So very simply, we'll just go from top to bottom like we talked about before. Line description, this is going to be detect. And what is it citing? So now I go ahead and write that. And look at that. Line one is now dedicated detecting the citing. Now the next two blocks have to do with how you configure that output or input. Remember these are dual mode. You can make them inputs or outputs. And this is where you set that up. So is it going to have an output or an input? Well, as a detector, it's taking information into the LCC network, so it becomes an input. So I'll leave output function as no function. And as input function, I'm going to pick one of these things here. Now I'm not going to worry about all these other modes. We're just going to focus on active high or active low and what's going on there. Um, active high means that it's going to be logical high to be on. An active low means it's going to be logical low to be on. What does that mean? It means that it depends on your detector. It so happens that a BOD4CP is set up as active low. In other words, it normally has high voltage on the pin when it's not detecting, and when it drops to low voltage, it means something's on that track. So what I want to say is that it is active when it's low, and then I'll go ahead and write that. So I've got the detector sighting, no function on the output, but I do have a function on the input that's active when it's low. The next section here talks about the delay. Um, what, what's going on here is this section lets you have like a debounce. You know, um, it turns out the BOD4CP has about a second built in, a second delay, so the, so the contact has to be made for about a second before the BOD4 says, okay, this is a real signal. You don't want spurious or intermittent uh, signals coming through and tripping all your signals and logic and so on. So you can put a delay timer in here. Again, the BOD4 comes with it. If I had an aftermarket or my own or a different version uh, that didn't have any um, delay, here's where you can build some in. Okay, now it's where it gets interesting. Okay, so the next section here. This is what you can think of as what the I.O., the hardware side, is going to do. Now this section down here, we start configuring what the LCC side of it does, right? One side's all the wiring it comes into this card, into this node, and now it's going to go out into the LCC network. And I got a choice. Either the event's going to create a, a command, or it's looking for a command. In other words, it might be a command that throws a turn out or something. And then, or the second half here is that it's going to create an event that's going to be a producer of some sort that is going to run out into the layout. It mirrors up here. Output function, it's looking for a command, so it's waiting for something to be sent. In other words, it becomes a consumer, like throws a turnout or something. Or it's a producer of an event, like a push button or a detection, that's mirrored down here. If it's waiting for a command, when this event occurs, blah, 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 the line will be state changed to boom. And we'll get into that next time. So we're not going to use that one. That kind of stays dead because this is going to be producing an event. So I'm going to use the one down here. Event, event one, upon this action, some event will be sent. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so event one upon the what action? When the output is, or the input is on. Okay, so whenever that input is on, whenever we have this active function, input function low, we decided that was when it's on, it will create this event. When the input is on, it will create this event. So I'm going to go ahead and hit right on that. So that's the on function. You always have to have a mirror. So event two, now, when it turns off, input off, write that, this event will be sent. So take a look. Event one, 006, is when the, the event that's created, when that detection turns on, event two is 007. When it turns off, it'll send 007. So every time it goes on, you'll send an event. When it turns off again, it'll send an event. And that way, the LCC network knows that it's either on or off. You can keep creating more events. You can have all kinds of events sent, up to six events, but we don't need that. We're going to keep this pretty simple. So there you go. You have now configured a single point on your LCC network, in this particular case, a detection block. Now just for our grins, we're going to go ahead and do this for the other blocks, and you can just kind of follow along with me.
Okay, we are there. You have now configured four detection sections for this particular section of track. That's it, and that's all that we have for today. Thanks for watching.